Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Husker Hot Takes, a weekly show from the Daily Nebraskan in which I, football beat reporter and senior sports editor Landon Wirt, speaks with another member of the Daily Nebraskan about all things Husker football. And, you know, my introduction is a little uh, little uh, undeserving, I guess, because this isn't just any Daily Nebraskan staffer. This is the Daily Nebraskan editor-in-chief, Dave Berman, Dave, um, welcome, and is this the greatest achievement of your journalistic career so far? Oh, absolutely. I think, uh, especially at the DN, this is, like, top-tier achievement. Um, you know, I've been a big fan of the show ever since it started. How many weeks ago? Um, yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I think four, four weeks ago. This is episode five, so... Well, I have been uh, the show's biggest fan, uh, and I am very, very happy to be joining you today, Landon. Awesome. You know, this is the number one place for all things Husker discourse anywhere on the internet. So it is truly um, one of the greatest honors. And Nebraska football, we talked about this last week when I was on with opinion editor Sidney Miller, but the season kind of just felt over after the bye week happened and Frost was extended and all the assistant coaches are fired. And in order to help appease that season is over already kind of feeling, um, actually nothing's been done. It's almost gotten worse. Uh, a couple days ago, senior linebacker JoJo Doman announced that he would be out the rest of the season due to injury, another huge blow um, for Nebraska's defense. Uh, and there are two games left. Nebraska's out out one of its critical leaders, down four offensive coaches. So Nebraska has two games left this Saturday against Wisconsin, and then the Cyhawk, uh, not the Cyhawk, that's Iowa-Iowa State, the big Nebraska-Iowa game uh, on Black Friday. So I guess what do you – you know, as a Nebraska fan, what do you want to see um, over these last two games that will instill some sort of confidence, I guess, moving forward? Yeah, for sure. So I, I think, first of all, um, yeah, I mean, there is football this weekend. I think, like you said, it, it's uh, kind of very easy as a, as a Nebraska fan to feel checked out of the season. Kind of feels like it's already over because effectively it is. <laughs> um, and so I think at this point, I think I just want to see um, – Nebraska just keep fighting. Uh, I mean, you can say a lot of things about this team, but you can't really say that they've given up, that they, they've, they've, they've risen to the occasion for um, games that they're playing very difficult opponents, and their last two are very, you know, very good opponents. So I would hope that they would at least continue that trend where I don't really expect them to win any of these games, but, you know, just keep it close. Don't, don't, get, uh, don't get blown out, I think would be, would be excellent. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty good. You know, all of Nebraska's losses, of course, uh, sans the Ohio State game, have been you know, one score, and everything's been nine points or, or less. Nebraska's yet to lose by, by double digits this year, which is just really remarkable and also a testament to how downright strange uh, this season has been. So one of the things that's kind of been floated out a bit um, this week on Twitter a little um, is – maybe are we going to get the chance to see some of these younger guys at the skill position slash guys that haven't seen a lot of minutes so far this season. So for the receivers, it could be players like Alante Brown or more Xavier Betts. Uh, tight ends, Thomas Fedoni is a name uh, that we heard a couple of weeks ago is, is recovered, or at least close to fully from his ACL injury. Um, then potentially even at quarterback, maybe seeing someone like Logan Smothers or Heinrich Harburg spell Adrian Martinez um, in spells. Uh, and then on the defensive side of the ball, you know, you have to replace a guy like JoJo Doman, of course. Um, and there's going to be somebody new and someone young slid into his role as well. So is that something that, you know, from from your perspective, you're one of the things that you're interested in monitoring uh, here down the stretch? Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, at this point, it seems like Nebraska as a, as a whole is kind of looking toward next season. I think the coaching staff certainly is while while trying to make a good impression in these last two games. Um, I'm sure they are, you know, they're evaluating for the future, trying to figure out what a very important fifth year is going to look like for Scott Frost. Um, so, yeah, I think kind of of those names that you mentioned, definitely excited to see if Thomas Fedoni uh, will hit the field. Um, one of Scott Frost's highest recruits since he's been here. Correct? Yeah, maybe, maybe the, I, I, yeah. don't quote me on that, but it might be. <laughs> for sure. Um, so, so, yeah, hopefully he can hit, take the field. Um, I think Austin Allen's leaving most likely after yes. this year. Um, so there will be a, a little bit of a, um, tight end hole and I, I think he'll definitely be a top candidate to fill that so <laughs> very excited to see uh, what he is able to do yeah that that will be interesting and just what what a weird sight that that will be on Saturday looking at the sidelines with just no familiar faces down there next to Frost um, that will be very very weird uh, For sure. and something that will take 
a bit to get used to. So Wisconsin. Uh, Wisconsin is ranked uh, very high, or highly-ish in the co- most recent edition of the college football playoff poll, I believe 18th of the AP. The Badgers have really turned their season around from kind of a gross sort of nothing in the early stages. Uh, one in one in three, I think, or one and two following a, a loss to Michigan. And then, you know, they've rattled off six games in a row. And uh, the thing that has made Wisconsin so successful is it's basically a, a carbon copy of all of this successful Badgers teams of years past. Really physical, good run game technically sound defense and a defense that on top of that is very very good and doesn't allow a lot of points wisconsin gives up an average of 155 passing yards per game 60 rushing yards per game uh, for you know to an average of, of 216 a contest and only allows 14.6 points per game so um factor in that with the fact that nebraska has an entirely new offensive coaching staff and my question is does Nebraska score more than 10 points? I, I'm being kind of completely serious because I'm not really sure what the answer is. You know, I'm going to go uh, right in the middle. Uh, I'm going to say they score exactly 10 points oh, this Saturday. Oh, boo. Um, Non-answer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I think Nebraska has at least one touchdown in them. Um, I think they will struggle to move the ball, but I think can still make some explosive plays with the playmakers that they still have. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll go you know, right in the middle, 10 points exactly for this Saturday. Yeah, no, I, I like that too, and it should be noted that Wisconsin's last two games have been Northwestern and Rutgers, not two two Big Ten teams that aren't exactly known for, for setting the world on fire offensively. Northwestern did just manage seven points against Nebraska in a game that feels like forever ago, but it did indeed happen. Um, 200 yards, you think Nebraska is able to clip uh, that mark as well? That's been a, a total that Wisconsin seems to be holding teams right at or right above. You know, I'm going to go right at 200 yards again. No, I'm, I'm kidding. <laughs> I, I think they will exceed that number. Um, I think I, I'd like to believe that there is still, you know, despite all, all of the uh, kind of distractions behind the scenes, but despite there being entirely new offensive coaching staff this weekend, um, I, I think Nebraska will be able to crack that 200-yard mark. Yeah, and I, I kind of tend to agree. I think especially at this point, you kind of have nothing to lose. So whether it's trying things out like special trick plays offensively, maybe it's a trick play in the special teams department. At this point, you really are just playing with house money. So I think if Nebraska is aggressive and does some of those things and plays like a team that has literally nothing to lose uh, at this point anymore, um, especially because, I mean, now we know everything, right? Like, the staff's going to get changed. Frost is coming back, so you might as well take some risks mm-hmm. and have a little bit of fun with it and potentially spoil someone else's season. So I think that if if that mentality is applied, I, I agree. I think 200 yards is something, and, and 10 points, too, is a mark that can be cleared for sure. Um, lastly, predictions. Uh, how do you think that uh, a fun old Saturday afternoon in, in Camp Randall will go for a Nebraska team that, mind you, has not beaten Wisconsin or Scott Frost and has not won against Wisconsin in quite some time? Yeah, so uh, I guess score prediction right off the top. Um, I think I'm going to go 24-10 here. Um, I expect Nebraska to keep it generally close. Um, hopefully... Uh, like I said, just, you know, stay in the game, um, compete with a very good Wisconsin team. Um, and yeah, just, uh, show some resolve and some reason to believe that next year could and hopefully will be different. Yeah. I like that. I will not give my predictions. Stay tuned for the Daily Nebraskans editor score predictions for, uh, takes from myself, Martin Herz and Jason Hahn for how Saturday will go. Um, I still have a lot to process and a lot to think about when it comes to this game between the Huskers and Badgers. Um, That'll wrap up this episode of Husker Hot Takes. Dave, thank you so much uh, for joining us. We had to battle through a little bit of adversity there. Uh, We had a screen fall down, but we we made it through. We made it through, and the the show goes on because... As performers, that is what we do. Absolutely. Uh, Dave, thanks so much. And uh, for Landon Wirt, this has been Dave Berman, and this has been Husker Hot Takes, signing off. Thank you.